hi. It's been a really long time. I'm Emma, if you've forgotten all about me. I took a little hiatus from booktube uh, because I've been in the process of moving and trying to finish up some New York stuff in general before I start my new job. Uh, so yes, I've been a little bit swamped, but I could not not do the mid-year freakout tag. So before we get to the tag, um, just sort of like an overall update on where I am with reading this year. This year has been a little bit of a come down from 2020 because I'm not sitting at home all day every day. Therefore, I am not reading as many good books. It's the unfortunate downside of living in a world where I can see people again. Um, I would, I prefer to see people than to sit in my apartment and read all day, but you know. Anyway, so I've read, uh, I think 26 books this year, which is pretty close to on track for my goal of 52 books overall in the year. Um, a lot of those have been rereads. Uh, I read, reread a lot of fantasy series in the spring when I was focusing very hard on finishing my thesis and stuff because that's sort of what I go to for comfort reading. Uh, other than those sort of fantasy rereads, I've been reading some nonfiction, but overall um, I feel like I've mentioned in a couple of videos, but I feel like I've been sort of slumpy since uh, the beginning of the year. I haven't really been able to, to lock in to a lot of books and feel good reading it. I think that my slump may finally be over thanks to the booktube prize. Um, it just sort of forced me to start reading some books that I'm interested in and required some focus to a deadline, I guess. Uh, and I didn't think that that's what I needed, but I'm feeling much more like into it now that I'm now that I'm working on this aspect. Actually, when this goes up, my, my round of the booktube prize is going to be like almost over. So hopefully I've, I've already read all of those by the time you're, you're seeing this, but I, I do have to read one or two more by next week. So, okay, cool. Let's just get to the mid-year book freak out tag. The first prompt is, uh, what is the best book you've read so far this year? And I had two, we have a tie. The first one is Exhalation by Ted Chang, which is a collection of short stories. They're, they're very philosophical uh, and I just feel like they made me think a lot. I was very happily surprised by them. So that's my first pick. I do have that book somewhere in my apartment, um, but either I lent it to somebody or it's already in a box. So that's that's going to be the theme of a lot of these uh, books. The other book that I have really enjoyed this year is Disfigured by Amanda Ledick. Uh, this uh, is sort of one part literary criticism about fairy tales and the representation of disabled and disfigured people in fairy tales uh, and uh, Ledick's own experience as somebody with cystic fibrosis. Again, I was really happily surprised by this. I thought it was going to be a little bit dense being a literary analysis type O book, uh, but I found it very readable and uh, really interesting uh, dissection of how disability has been viewed in our culture uh, throughout millennia. Maybe not millennia. Basically, you know, since before the Grimm, the Grimm Brothers up through Disney. Uh, this this is a really insightful look at how fairy tales can demonize uh, disability. The next question is, what's the best sequel you've read this year? And I actually have not read very many sequels and the sequels that I have read have largely been rereads of um, series from my childhood that are like old favorites. Uh, so I think the best sequel I've read this year is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. This is the only new to me sequel that I've read overall, and it was a great book. Uh, romance generally, even even though it's a sequel, it's like not not linearly a sequel. So that is fine by me. I'm, I'm not really into multi-part book series in general. Quickly moving on, question three is, what are some new releases that you haven't read yet but want to? I have a couple of these. One is Woman and Other Monsters by Jess Zimmerman. I heard uh, Zimmerman on the Longform podcast, which is a really, really great place to find out about new nonfiction releases. I am really excited uh, by sort of the, the thematic 
elements in this book. It's about feminism and mythology, um, which, you know, two, two of my favorite things. Other than that, I really want to read uh, this new book called Laziness Does Not Exist by Devin Price, I want to say. So Laziness Does Not Exist is about how the idea of laziness is like a puritanical construct that doesn't actually mean anything and it's been used to like demonize certain groups throughout the 20th century. Honestly, like I'm so so excited to read this. Like it it's hitting on so many topics that I find so interesting, but I'm trying to I'm in the process of backing down my expectations cuz whenever I go into a book with expectations this high, I get like really disappointed if we're being honest. Like no, no book can live up to my internal, like, enthusiasm about books. So yes, I'm basically just sitting on this one until I get a little bit more chill about it, and then I'm gonna read it, and hopefully I'm gonna love it, but we'll see at that point. Another book that I have been wanting to read is The Life of the Mind. This was recommended in a newsletter that I really enjoy. It's uh, uh, Mary Laura Philpott's newsletter. Mary Laura Philpott is a author, but she also um, is a bookseller at Parnassus Books in Nashville. So her newsletter is always great to find new books that are really fascinating and good reads overall. So I think that this book is going to be right, right up my alley in terms of fiction. Uh, I feel like I haven't, I haven't really had a really focused fiction year. I haven't read much fiction that I felt was new or progressed my reading interests, if that makes sense. Like I've been doing a lot of rereading, uh, which is fun in its own way. Uh, not, not to hate on rereading, but I, I, I feel like I sort of want to like break out of my break out of my fiction rut a little bit. Number four is what is your most anticipated release for the second half of the year? Uh, and I honestly like I have not been up on this this year. Normally I, I like like to follow book releases and book news in general because it's sort of like fun. The, the you know who's who's getting the hype and stuff like that. It's fun fun to follow along with, but. Um, this year I haven't been as involved, um, and I honestly went through Publishers Weekly and went through a bunch of their lists and, like, could not find any books that I was, like, really actively excited about that's coming out this fall. Um, I'm sure there will be books that are coming out, I just, you know, haven't, haven't heard of them yet. Um, so that's sort of where I am with new releases. Um, I think some books that I'm really excited to get to in the second half of the year in the fall uh, to sort of change this question a bit is I, I would really like to start reading some more poetry. Um, I am currently reading uh, Red Comet for the Book 2 Prize and no comment, but... Okay, cool. I'm feeling sort of inspired to uh, get get some more poetry in my life in general and i've always had a hard time like prioritizing poetry cuz it's not something where you're going to like read through uh, front to back um and i i don't really know how to fit something into my life that i'm not like like it's it's not like part of the checklist you know where it's like ah you're done great a little bit of millennial psychology here so basically i'd really like to get a little bit more into poetry in the fall and i'm just going to say that this is my answer to this question I cheat. It's great. It's fine. Question number five is what is your biggest disappointment for the year? And this was an early one, but I was quite disappointed in Red Rising. Uh, I think I rated it two stars on Goodreads. I think I would go back and change that to one star at this point, um, mainly because I'm digging in because I know a lot of people really, really love this series. Um, but I just found it like like the narrator completely unbearable it's just a very male book where basically every female character is presented as a conduit for the male narr narrator's emotional development you know what i mean like like they don't they don't have their own agency it's just how do these women change the man like it's i feel like it's hard to describe what that feels like when you're reading that in a book, but it's one of those you know it when you see it type of things. I, I just found this book like quite dull, 
poorly written uh, one-to-one knockoff of The Hunger Games. Yeah, and I, I think its treatment of eugenics in general was not nuanced. And yeah, one of the worst books I've read in the last five years. Tell us how you really feel if you're watching Pierce Brown. You don't win them all. Maybe try reading women's writing a little bit, like occasionally. I'm gonna get lots of thumbs downs on this video. Actually, the only time I ever get thumbs down on video is when I insult Cassandra Clare. So we'll see if this also triggers some bing, 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 bing. Anyways. Cool. Moving on. What was my biggest surprise of the year in terms of books? Um, and I would say that my biggest surprise is probably Tess of the Road. Um, I, I like that both of these are genre fiction because I feel like that's sort of fitting. Um, Tess of the Road is a story about a woman who had some issues in her past um, and is being punished by by her family and society for them in general. And she ends up deciding to basically run away from home and go on a uh, journey. And it is a fantasy novel. Um, so uh, she's on her journey with this uh, sort of dragon-like creature called a Quigatol. And they are sort of uncovering some like dragon lore stuff. And like their fantasy is central to this book. Uh, but really the themes and uh, the character development is all um, much more, much more than what you think of in genre fiction, which is doing genre fiction a disservice, I think, but it's, it's just, very character driven and it's a very moving book. And I was just surprised by how resonant it was. Yes, okay, moving on. Question seven is your favorite new author. And I don't know if he's a favorite, 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 but I really, really, really did enjoy uh, Ted Chang's writing. I gotta repeat myself for emphasis. Basically, I just sort of, interpreted this as like, would you buy another book by this person and like be excited to read it? And yes, I would really like to buy more of Ted Chang stuff and read it and think about it and all that jazz. So I, I think that's a good answer for this question. Number eight is newest fictional crush, which is a prompt that a lot of people skip in this tag in general. And I will say that uh, I don't generally get fictional crushes. Uh, I think I did reread Sabriel this year, um, and Touchstone was one of my one of my favorite fictional crushes when I was when I was a kid. And I read it in like middle school, um, so I guess I'll say that. Although it's not a new fictional crush, uh, but I, I don't really get them. Brian has a really great defense of this question in this tag, uh, so go, go ahead and go and watch his video on that, and I will link that down below. And um, yeah, it's it's a good question if you do get fictional crushes. You, you, should, you should respond to this question. Okay, number nine is newest favorite uh, character in a book. And again, I sort of struggle with this because I feel like I very rarely come out of a book and I'm like, oh, I, lo I love this character. Like maybe one or two characters a year will affect me like that. I think of the ones that I've read so far this year. I would say that Tess, Tess is my favorite. Oh, sorry. I just realized that I think her name is Tess because I think it's a reference to Tessa Durr reveals. Like I think, I think that's like, like a literary reference point that the author was going after. Oh, okay. So Tess from Tess on the Road is uh, probably one of my favorite characters from this year. And that was largely because I was rereading a lot and reading some nonfiction and there weren't a lot of choices. But I, I do, I, I felt her plight strongly uh, in general. And I think it works. Okay, number 10 is a book that made you cry. I don't normally cry for books, but I think, again, Tests of the Road would apply to this in general. Okay. Question 11 is a book that made you happy. I'm playing Sabriel here because I reread that and that was one of my childhood favorite books and um, I always enjoy rereading it. I have recently been, because I've been rereading so much this year, I've been recently trying to 
sort of reread more critically and ask like what about this makes it so good and I think in truth in retrospect like it's not that these books that I read as a young adult are any better than any of the young adult books coming out now it's definitely just the nostalgia factor um, I mean I feel like in a lot of ways they're sort of worse you have to make more allowances for some problematic shit in general I think it's just really telling of, of how deeply literature can affect us as kids and how that really sticks with us. I'm getting off on a tangent though. Okay, next question. Number 12 is the most beautiful book you've acquired this year. And I decided that I want to reread Little Women. Uh, and I got myself a physical copy. And I feel like basically for these classics, you have the option of getting a really, really shitty like mass market, like the Dover edition of books, or you can get like really schnazzy, like designed books so that's that's what I ended up doing um and yeah I don't know who the artist is for this for this cover but they they have a number of different sort of like like children's books that are redesigned in this way and um I really like the look of this one now I just have to like immediately pack it into a box so um may, maybe I shouldn't have bought this but I'll read it soon again reread it it'll be great yeah, number 13 is uh, books that you're planning to read by the end of the year. Um, so right now I'm currently working on the nonfiction booktube prize semifinal books. Um, and that's been eating up my June and I am hoping to be done with those soon because my ratings are due soon. So that's going to happen. Uh, and then other than that, I'm supposed to be reading Middle March with Milena. Um, and I am really excited to read this. I am a about 200 pages in, uh, which is not not very far in at all. Melina's already finished it. Uh, I got a little bit distracted by the booktube prize, so this is sort of my next up on the docket. Um, I have a couple weeks of actual vacation once I get to California. Um, so this is this is what I'm going to be doing, and I'm excited. Um, and then what else? The poetry I already mentioned. I'm also sort of supposed to be reading Authority with Mo. We've definitely both fizzled out on this. I have maybe 130 pages left um, and I'm hoping to just uh, power through for completeness, completeness sake. I don't know if I'm gonna pick up the third book in this series. Uh, I have heard good things about the third book over this one, so there's that. Um, and then I also have, whoop, Oh my gosh. I also have um, two sort of fat books that I have stalled out on, but do really want to finish. Um, and I think that uh, finishing these off this year would be a good accomplishment. So the first is A Bright Shining Lie by uh, Neil Sheehan. This is a very comprehensive history of the Vietnam War told sort of like as a biography of one man, uh, John Van. That rhymes. So I have gotten about Five, oh, I don't know which of these bookmarks is right. I think I've gotten about 500 pages into this um, and I still have like 200 pages to go. Um, and it's been a while since I picked this up. It's been like probably like eight months. Um, so I might, I might need to like Wikipedia some of this stuff. Uh, before I get back into it, but I do really want to finish this because this is like, this is, this is more than I ever learned about Vietnam in school. You, you know, the, the politics and the time is, is just a really interesting bit of history that I really don't know enough about. So, um, I'm excited to finish this. I am also, uh, working through A Commotion in the Blood by Steve Hall. Um, this is a really wonderful book about, uh, sort of the history of uh, cancer immunotherapy. Uh, cancer immunotherapy is sort of more recently became more famous uh, because there was a bit of a breakthrough in, in the 2010s and uh, it recently won the Nobel Prize. Uh, but the idea of cancer immunotherapy has been around for a hundred years at least. And this is just a really fascinating history of that. It can be a little bit dense at times, um, but it is a scientific topic that I'm not directly working on. So I've been finding it really interesting to read. Um, and I'm about, I, I think I'm about like two thirds of the way through this one. Um, so 
I'm really, really excited to finish this. I took a writing class once from Steve Hall on science writing, and he is like the nicest man alive, and I've always wanted to read his books. Uh, so this is the first one I'm reading. So that's that's what I look forward to reading in the fall. Lots of reading plans. Thank you so much for watching watch my video, watching this tag. Let me know if you have any favorite books from this year, any books that you would recommend. Um, again, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, spend a little bit more time reading over the next month um, as I'm going to be on vacation and not just sort of vaguely working and vaguely freaking out about where I'm going to live. So just just some like end of video logistics stuff uh, for those of you still here. Hi, <laughs> you guys are the best. Um, I'm sorry I was gone from booktube for such a long time. I really didn't mean to. Um, I thought that the difficult part of doing my thesis was going to be before my thesis and my thesis defense and it was, but then I did it and I was just like so burnt out that I, I feel like I have not been a person for like the last month and a half. So I've just been sort of like getting back on my feet. I do feel bad because I feel like I always want to be consistent on here and also consistently watching your stuff. Uh, and I haven't been able to do that over the last couple weeks. So I apologize. Um, I am hoping to find some sort of balance with this and the other things going on in my life uh, where I won't just randomly disappear again. Um, I'm sort of thinking that either I might start getting a little bit more fast and loose with the editing or go to every other week or um, have some, some pre-set like months where I take off, like maybe in the future, I'm going to take off like August and January or something to just sort of reset and get some more content stocked up. This is me just spitballing here, but basically, I don't know. I, I really value you guys as a community and I just feel bad when I disappear. And yeah, I, I hope at least over the next couple of weeks to be more consistent and, uh, uh, you know, gen generate some backup content while I'm on vacation so that there there aren't as many gaps in the future. So all that to say, thank you all so much for sticking with me. I love you guys. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you next week. Bye.